and have somebody to personally fuck with you and come at you and attack you and do things that are beyond the scope of the law. I'll just give y'all one example. Just one example, then I gotta go because I'm actually about to do an interview with the Atlanta Journal, um, which I appreciate. The AJC is about to interview me. I've sent them all the documents of everything that we're appealing from this court case. They're likely going to try and arrest me in the morning. So I just want the world to know that if I go to jail tomorrow, if I get arrested tomorrow, I want the world to know that I didn't ask for no special favors. I just came in. I hired the best attorney there is in family law in all of Georgia, which is why she has had clients and built her entire law firm because she's amazing at what she do. And I'm very concerned about what I'm about to experience in the courtroom in the morning. And the fact that this judge demanded that I come to court in the morning, I'm like, well, you demanding that I'm there for what? <laughs> I've never canceled and I've never not been in court when he's asked me to be. But I'm in the middle of promoting Beautiful Pain, 1992. And he says, shut all that down, basically. Not his words, but like, shut it all down. You need to be physically in court in the morning. So I'm asking all the press, media, journalists, Atlanta Journal, TMZ, The Shade Room, uh, the AJC, not just a blogger, not just somebody that can, you know, write some shit that's clickbait. But I really want y'all to reach out so that I can get y'all all of these documents of everything that we're appealing. But I just want to give y'all one example, just one. Now, for all the ladies that's looking at this, I got it. Whatever I'm about to say, I'm a man, right? So shut the fuck up and deal with it. No, no, that's not, this is not about man versus woman. This is not about baby daddy versus baby mama. All of the triggers, I just need y'all to bring all of that down and just know that she took the baby away from me when the baby was about one years old. Her head couldn't even stand up on his own. She left me, she filed for divorce. She packed up an innocent child that never asked to be here. There was an aggressive prenuptial agreement in place that she signed while having an attorney. She didn't sign it on her own. She signed it with an attorney that she hired on her own. And everything that we put in the court doc, in the documents, as far as the prenup, states that if I ever leave you or if you ever leave me, this is what you get and this is what I get to keep. She said, I did not marry you because if you're famous, your money, who you are, what you drive, the square footage of your house, fuck all that. I'm, I'm marrying you because I'm in love with you. And I, all of her friends, her family, and, and everybody I know, everybody she know, anybody she's ever known has said from being around her, we're talking about pastors, men and women of God, Friends, homies, her friends, all of her homies, everybody was convinced, just like I was, that her intentions were sincere, just to find out they wasn't. Now we got the album Beautiful Pain. I'm not proud of the success of this album. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. Y'all are loving this album. Man, this album is crazy. No skips. I can't stop listening to it. I've been getting text messages and phone calls and people been hitting my phone. This is the most embarrassing thing I've ever released in my fucking life. This is the most... I am so ashamed and embarrassed that those lyrics are mine, those feelings are mine, those vulnerabilities that I sung in these songs of mine. I could care less about album sales. I could care less about charting. You know, I love that my song Wildflower is doing well. But if somebody said, would you want your mother to still be alive? That you dedicated Wildflower to? I mean, the song is on fire, Reese. You should feel great, man. The song is on fire. Flower, Wildflower is killing it. Man, the song is charting, it's this and it's that. And they would ask me, how do you feel about all the success from Wildflower? 
I don't give a fuck about the success of Wildfly. You know what I want? I want my mama back. I want my mama to still be alive. I want to sing the song Wildflower. I love the song. But I don't want to dedicate the song Wildflower to my mother that's no longer alive. See, some of y'all, and I don't want anybody to be triggered by this, some of y'all don't know what it's like to make money. Some of y'all don't know what it's like to live a particular life or lifestyle that I live. So some of y'all could say, if I got to shoot, stab, and kill my homie, my mama, cut off my daddy, break up, get, go through a divorce, do this, do that, shit, I'll write a book from it and make a shitload of money. So fuck that girl. No. 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 I wanted to be married for the rest of my life. It does not mean that I want this woman back. Y'all are twisting my word. Why you keep talking about her? Why don't you just focus on... I'm very focused on Zelly. We good. Y'all ain't finna shame me into shutting up and talking about the way I feel. So, with that being said, I'm about to watch a documentary called Dear Mama and get some inspiration from Tupac's mama who happens to be, rest in peace, the godmother of my daughter Shayla. Let me show y'all something before I go. Hold on. Look at that. See that? I was 15 years old. This was actually, I think this was before or right after I did the Coke commercial. Look at little Ty. Look at the young Ty. Look at that. I met Tupac at a BET party. Couldn't believe it. Fifteen some years later, ten years some later, whatever it was, uh, connected with Afeni Shakur. She loved me. She embraced me. She took me in as her own and then told me, you remind me of my son. Tupac's sister could confirm this. Didn't do anything for me. Street credibility wise, I didn't make me a thug, didn't make me a super thug. I didn't want to go get no tattoos and do anything crazy. Look, oh, Afeni Shakur mama just stamped me and said, she, I remind her of Tupac. <laughs> no. But I could tell you right now, some of my greatest inspirations have been men and women, mm, thank you, Jesus, that have been vocal, outspoken, that have been clear and specific about the law, the laws, Attorney Benjamin Crump, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, um, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, oh, my God. Just as far as black culture. Now I want to remind y'all that there's a documentary that y'all need to watch. Okay, let me spell this out. If y'all can hear what I'm saying, I want y'all to write this in the comments. Coin Tell Pro. I want y'all to write Coin Tell Pro in the comments. Spelled regular. Coin Tell Pro. Y'all watch that documentary. Y'all are going to know that there was a gentleman who founded the FBI named J. Edgar Hoover. And anybody who had any type of movement, Native Americans, Mexican Latinos, blacks, whites, any type, Asians, any type of group that had a movement, Cointel Pro, they ended up infiltrating all of these different organizations. This is at the height of racism, at the height of of people out here just trying to figure out on behalf of their religion, their group, men's rights, women's rights, Latino, Native Americans, Indians, Mexicans, Latino. Like, it was crazy. And every one of these 
organizations with any type of movement, Black Panther Party, Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, the Muslims, Nation of Islam, you name it. Anybody who had a movement, everybody got infiltrated because of Pro. Look at the documentary. Hi, babe. I love you. I love you, my zellies. I miss you. I can't wait for you to come home. Now, I'm going to give y'all something before I let y'all. Tomorrow morning, I got to go to court. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to happen, but there's every sign and indication in the world for me right now that I'm going to court and I'm going to be arrested. And I'm going to be arrested for whatever reason he's going to decide to arrest me over. And he demanded that I was physically there. And I said, I'm in the middle of promoting 1992 to my lawyer. I'm in the middle of promoting this movie. You can see I'm all over everywhere. All these interviews, press, media, junkets, press tours, world premiere. You know, whatever he wants to address, whatever he wants to come to court about, you know, I, I'm going to go to court. I don't, I don't run from, you know, responsibility. I've never canceled a court hearing ever. I don't do nothing illegal, and I don't go to court expecting to win because I'm famous. As a matter of fact, being famous <laughs> backfires. Everybody loves fame until that shit backfires, right? Yep. Well... I'm going to court in the morning, so I am asking for all press, media, and journalists. Set up your tripods, come to court, be ready to watch and witness them putting all my money on display. I'm in the middle of seven different lawsuits. Teddy Pendergrass lawsuit that I lost, the Home Depot lawsuit that I ended up running out of money and couldn't continue the full duration, but I'm going to reactivate it as soon as my money go back up. So they're going to unpack tax returns, bank statements. They're going to go into all my financials. No problem. God has been good some way, somehow, even when my money gets low, some way, somehow, something comes in to help me to stay afloat. So all of my financial business will be discussed on full display. Have fun, have at it. It's going to be beautiful, right? And then what else does this judge have in mind for me? What else is he going to drop on me in the morning? Well, I found. That I might be arrested tomorrow. So with that being said, the Atlanta Journal, New York Times, TMZ, the New York Post, L.A. Times, all of the real journalists, although I respect bloggers and I respect podcasters, we got some real journalists that we need in that courtroom because we just want to do a little case study with Mr. Kevin M. Farmer that I've tried to get thrown off the bench now, not once, but twice. And we also want to unpack the collusion which means that a judge is working in cahoots with another attorney, and his name is Adam Gleckman, who's been representing my ex now for four years. And he went on record, because I don't lie and make shit up. He went on record, and we asked, since you've been rep, this is her third law firm, since you've been representing Samantha for the last four years, how much money has she paid your law firm? He said $5,000. She makes $170,000 a year. Boop. She makes $170,000 a year. And you've only asked her for $5,000? You know what I need to do? I need to put me some motherfucking baby hairs in. I need to go ahead and look pretty. I need to be a woman. Because how do you represent somebody? One to three law firms. She makes over 170000 a year. That's what the debt bank statement stated. How do you represent somebody for four full years, three different law firms for free? Are you attracted to Samantha? 
You like the way she bats her purse in her handbags? You like them baby hairs, Mr. Mr. Gleckman, Adam Gleckman. Don't you got a wife at home with kids? How you out here representing somebody for four straight years and you ain't asking them for no money when they actually have money? Now, now, what I want y'all to understand is I got it. I'm a celebrity. I'm an entertainer. I do have more money than her. I make more money than her. But we're going to court because they've already cracked my prenuptial agreement that I had with my ex. That's one. Number two, if we're talking about child support, between how much money your mama make and between how much money I make, the necessary needs of the child are beyond met. You don't leave your husband. You don't leave the life and the lifestyle that you were living with your husband on your own. And you're trying to take the life that we live together. You're trying to take my life with you. It was our life. And now that you said, fuck you, I don't want to be here no more. This is the life that I had before you. And now you're trying to take my life with you. It does not work that way. So we're going to play a song right now. Because... This is a song that, this is a song right here that I just really want y'all to understand that when this song was created, 